guys, so welcome back. And um, I've decided to keep going. Um, actually, there's no way that I couldn't keep going because you guys are out of control. Um, I can't believe how much, how kind everybody was on that um, last uh, explanation video that I just put up. Um, let me tell you, if you're, I, I can't believe I didn't do it before. Like I really actually needed to do that before because let me tell you, like if you're having a bad day, make a YouTube video and share that um, with other people and they will make you feel incredible. If there was ever a doubt whether or not like humanity was supportive of each other, um, there shouldn't be any doubt anymore because that was really, I, I like, I think I posted somewhere, but I was like addicted to reading through your comments because not only were you very nice, you were actually kind of really genius um, in everything that you were saying. And I'm, I'm actually gonna touch on that in just a second. So my plan for today, um, my plan for my channel actually, my plan for today is to have kind of a, um, a car chat, um, but actually in my beauty room, obviously I'm not in my car. My driving schedule has kind of changed and um, also, my setup with my camera in my car um, has kind of changed, and so I thought, you know what, rather than wait for the perfect scenario, I will have a car chat in my room, and we'll just call this kind of like a car chat chit chat or something. That sounds stupid, but whatever. <laughs> Maybe it doesn't need a name. We don't need to give it a name. So, um, and my, my plan for my channel is just to kind of do as I can. Um, and kind of what I want, um, partly because that's kind of what you guys were saying, you know, just kind of do what you, you know, whatever you do is great, which is so, uh, is such a relief, but, um, kind of at the same time, I, with this whole perspective that I don't really care, um, kind of how good or not it gets while still having like respect for you know the people who are um kind of going on this journey with me um there's something really enticing about kind of a no holds barred thing where you don't feel like um you have to be polite all the time or um I don't want to say not PC but just there's just something very liberating in the idea of being able to just kind of be, which was kind of what I was talking about before. And you guys seemed very supportive of that, which I actually love. I think we can wind up doing some really great things here. So I literally, one of the benefits of being a small channel meant that I could read through literally every single one of your comments. Cause I have to tell you, it pisses me off when someone who has like millions of subscribers and like 25,000 comments, they're like, I totally read through all of your comments. And I'm like, Maybe they do, maybe they do, maybe I'm missing something. But that kind of makes me flinch a little bit. Oh, did you see, I just got snarky right away. <laughs> Not like anybody with millions of subscribers is gonna be watching me to call me out on me calling them out. But still, at the same time, hey, I didn't have a ton of comments. I had more than I expected, but I didn't have a ton. You know what, that meant I could read through all of them. And kind of what everybody was saying was there was kind of this general theme of brilliance, kind of like I said, but um, everyone basically said, you do you. I love that phrase. If I was in support of tattoos right now, um, or like a long-term temporary tattoo, I would get that tattooed. Like kind of on the inside of my arm, I would have it say, you do you. Because I think that is a guiding principle for anybody at any point or stage in their life, um, no matter what it is they're doing. I mean, if you're not kind of following that, even though that can be hard. Um, I just think that's that's some lines of brilliance right there. Make sure that you do you. Um, everybody also said, make sure you do what makes you happy. Um, and I, I, I respect that statement quite a bit because I think many times we really do kind of lose sight of making sure that what we're doing makes us happy. Now granted, sometimes we wanna go to, we don't wanna go to work but we need to um, because the money makes us happy, but the actual going to work sometimes doesn't make us happy. Um, so I get that too, but um, for something like this, I, I completely appreciate that you guys were saying, you know, basically make sure that you do what makes you happy. Um, a number of you actually even then apologized, not apologized, but we're, we're just kind of saying, you know, hey, I'm really sorry that you, you know, got to that point where you were feeling frustrated or whatever. Let me just 
clarify please i don't think anybody took it this way but let me just clarify that none of that came from my viewers um or anybody who watched that sounds so fancy my viewers um or anybody that watched my videos that was completely that came from me that was completely self-imposed and self-created that um that i had this desire to almost or not even a desire. I had this like inclination to kind of perform. Um, and that completely came from me. Maybe the, the YouTube community and the essence of YouTube in general drove that a little bit. Um, but that didn't come from my interactions, um, with people who were watching my videos and people who were supporting me that, so I just wanted to make that clarification. I don't think anybody took it that way, but you never know. And you should kind of make sure you address all, all parts of it. The other thing that was a very common theme in all of the comments, um, and it was interesting to me that, um, you guys picked up on it because I tried not to make it a big deal, but I guess it's a compelling enough point that it, it red flagged and it caught your attention, which is awesome because it demonstrates that you guys, overall have a pretty um, healthy perspective on life because y'all you were yelling at me saying to me nobody's perfect don't try to be perfect like where you know where or what is that coming from and that's that's kind of what I want to talk about today I didn't even realize how overwhelming and how compelling that um, that goal of being perfect was and it really got me thinking and that's kind of what I'm gonna make this car chat chit chat um, about today was because it really it resonated with me quite a bit and it and ironically it wasn't even something that I was planning on spending a lot of time on when I um, made that first video um, because I was more focused like I said on on growing my channel and being successful but somewhere in that became this um, this drive to be really perfect and thinking that that was going to have an impact on my success. And so that's kind of what I'm gonna chat with you guys about today because I'm curious um, to see what else you think about that topic. But one of the things I wanted to do with, with you guys actually, um, in honor of your advice, um, in reference to don't pay attention to the numbers and just be yourself and just do you and don't be perfect, um, I had an app, big surprise. I had an app that was linked to my subscriber count. So, you know, you can go into your YouTube channel and, and after a couple of clicks, you can kind of get your analytics and stuff. Well, there was an app that I found, of course, where you could easily, with opening the app, find out how many subscribers you had. And it, what's ironic is it's this like red screen, like to symbolize YouTube. My husband would know whenever I was in the app because it would make my face like glow red and he'd be like, get out of the subscriber count. Like, <laughs> He was like, you have a problem with that. And so, um, I can't, I have to admit it though, I'm gonna put it out there that I totally was watching <laughs> my subscriber count after I posted that last video. I'm like, okay, Gina, you seriously have a problem. Which PS, it went down after I put that video up. I'm not even lying, I'm not even lying. And you know what, I don't care because I really, I feel like that video that I just put up, um, was like the best thing I ever did. It really was. I think you guys enjoyed it too, but it, for me, it was like the most cathartic, like expressive, like get real thing. It was almost like a confession, honestly. And it felt so good. I mean, I wish I kept the camera rolling once I actually, you know, stopped the speaking portion of the video because I was so calm. And I wasn't feeling that when I would, cut my recording before and so um anyway so true confession yes I went back to my old habits almost right away and I'm like they would be so upset with me so what I'm doing today is here I am going to delete the app I can't do it while showing you but just take my word for it that I'm clicking on the app right now and I'm going to delete it off my phone it's actually called sub count Delete sub count. Deleting this app will also delete its data. Yeah, you know what? Good riddance because I am growing and I don't need to be, get off, it's not deleting. I just deleted it. It's not deleting. Maybe it'll disappear. Oh my gosh. It's still on the screen. <laughs> okay, we'll deal with that later. Okay, but I tried to delete it. 
I'm not going to re oh wait no, that's weird. Okay, I'll deal with that at another time. But for some reason, that's like a cruel cool joke. I don't know why, but I'm deleting it. And if it didn't delete just now, um, then I will definitely take care of it later. Okay, so enough reflection, enough, you know, whatever. Anyway, but one more time, thank you so much for all of the comments and uh, all of the really brilliant stuff that you said because um, I'm like excited now because I really feel like we can definitely take our conversations in such a really cool place because, like I said, that was kind of a deep conversation and we were, oh, it was fabulous. So, what I wanted to talk to you about today was this whole idea of perfection. And I'm a, I mean, like, I'm a smart person. I'm like a very smart per to the point of perfection. I am a very smart person. But, um, I mean, I know better. I didn't actually need, I mean, I needed it, but it shouldn't have been necessary that people needed to point out to me, nobody's perfect, don't try to be perfect. And I would have said to you at any time during those two years, I, don't, I know I'm not perfect. I'm not trying to be perfect. And yet I was behaving that way. And I'm like, why do, and, I'm, and I can't be the only one, or maybe even, maybe not all the time, but I'm sure many of us will have those glimpses of where everything just you know has to be just right or or we just kind of you know when you when you have that that overwhelming like i have to get my life in order what the heck does that mean i don't even know if that's ever even possible to get our life in order but um but i was curious kind of where this idea of perfection was coming from and what did it mean and part of the what what was ironic about it was my perfection was mostly translated as a two-dimensional image. And so a major portion of the work that I did and that I was working towards in finding good skincare and good beauty products and, and all of that was so that we could look good. And then when you exaggerate looking good, you translate that to looking perfect. And so this whole idea of, of looking good it's kind of um it's kind of a dichotomy because part of us recognizes that we are so much more than what we look like but yet at the same time our physical appearance means a heck of a lot and so i started doing some research and i i mean when i say research like i'm not in like scientific journals or anything but i just basically i went online and i wanted to see what was out there what the what the talking points were, what the conversation, where it was going. And perfection, for some reason this, as I was thinking about it, I kept coming back to a lot of cliches. I guess we tend to relate um, beauty and the perfection of beauty, we wind up relating it to a lot of cliches. So um, one of the first cliches being that beauty is in the eye of the beholder meaning that anybody and anything can be beautiful as long as that's what your interpretation of it is. And it turns out that's not entirely true. There are actually somewhat scientifically studied universal physical characteristics that like cross nation or cross nations, um, people, humanity believes to be features of a, of, a, of a beautiful person. So whereas throughout history, for example, and in different times, um, you know, women of a size 14 were desirable and now, well, I'm not even sure now, but let's say at another time, women uh, like, you know, Kate Moss time, um, she was very thin. Um, and then that was perceived to be more desirable, universally speaking. So even beyond that, there are some universal characteristics such as the size of your eyes, um, meaning bigger eyes, the strength of your jaw, um, and the, the strength of your chin um, being uh, universally perceived as, as beautiful or um, good looking. The biggest one is um, physical symmetry when you know the right and left side of your face look closer together and it isn't as obvious that they are different from each other those characteristics happen to be like i said universally perceived as being beautiful and more desirable actually which kind of makes you frustrated and mad because those are things that we can't control but it was interesting to me that it wasn't just 
we make that cliche, beauty is in the, in the eye of the beholder, and that is true. But then it kind of makes you go, well, only to a certain point. The other cliche that comes to mind is the idea that your beauty is skin deep, where what's inside you, that internal beauty is what matters. And I, I mean, I completely support that because, you know, I've, I've studied mental health um, and work in, in a mental health industry so much so because I feel like how you feel and, and how you feel about yourself um, is ridiculously important. And so it really shouldn't even matter necessarily what you look like on the outside, but apparently, according to our society, it does. Because there are definitely benefits um, that they have found that people who are deemed to be more physically attractive, they have benefits apparently. Um, for example, they tend to make more money. They're also perceived as being healthier, which kind of relates to, I think, like, like biology and history and why pretty people, let's say, are more desirable because they are deemed to be healthier and in the interest of promoting the human race, that is what we are looking for, I suppose, in a mate, or at least what we were supposed to be looking for all this time, <laughs> says the person who's not ever having children. <laughs> but anyway, so people who look good, apparently um, it implies that they are healthier, at least that's what what we kind of perceive. And also people who look good on the outside and who are close to perfect, um, they are uh, more trustworthy. You're much more likely to trust somebody um, when they look good, which kind of makes you realize that that's probably why they use actors and actresses and athletes, generally pretty and compelling people, um, to sell products because people, they feel as if what, I guess that we're going to believe you much more, even though because you can memorize lines, that means you, you know how to sell. I don't even know. I can't even think of anything off the top of my head, but just because you can memorize lines and pretend to be something else or someone else on a very good level, that suddenly means that you're an expert in all other kinds of industries, kind of no matter what, which that doesn't make any sense. But yet, um, it tends to be the theory that we follow in our society. And that makes me grumpy too. And so I was thinking about this whole drive to be perfect and look perfect and be beautiful and how darn frustrating that was when you think about what the reality of our society is. Um, and so I decided to then kind of flip it and look into a little bit what, um, like basically what the pretty people think because I don't know what the pretty people think. I've never had that experience of being, you know what I'm talking about, right? You know, the the one who walks into a room and, you know, you just you can't help but stare because they're very compelling in their appearance. And it turns out the grass is not always greener on the other side because um, people who are perceived to be good looking apparently have troubles in this world as well. And you want to be mad at them and say, give me a break. But when I share with you kind of what, and, and that was my initial reaction to the article when I was reading, I was like, really? Sorry. I feel so bad for you that you don't look like a troll. Um, but that being said, then I kind of went through like what some of their explanations were and what some of their reasons were. And it's not funny. It really is not funny, which is kind of why I wanted to bring it to everybody's attention. Um, people who, this was funny, people who are good looking have a hard time finding dates. And I'm like, no, that's what the whole other half of the world, that's what my half of the world says. I, was having, I was having trouble finding dates because I felt as if, you know, but doesn't everybody feel as if they don't look good enough. But people who actually are pretty, they are deemed unapproachable because the, everybody else thinks, well, no, you must not be single. And so one woman actually said, she says, no, please approach me, talk to me, date me, I'm lonely. Everybody thinks I already have a significant other of some kind. And I thought, okay, I'm gonna let you go with that. I'm gonna let you take that. On a more serious note, people who um, are good looking feel as if they're really not taken seriously. That whole, and I'm using women as the, uh, female as the example, but um, as if you're a bimbo. I'm sure men must uh, experience that too, but offhand I can't think of what the male version of a bimbo is. But you get the idea where you can't possibly be smart because you are too good looking, and that's sad. 
That is so sad. Your level of intelligence, never mind trustworthy, but your level of intelligence, um, even, even no matter how much you speak, no matter how much you, you, you demonstrate that you are intelligent, it's as if we can't get past the fact that you look so good that you must, you just must be putting on a show you, that, you know, the, the facade is going to break pretty soon. And so you can't possibly, you know, be taken seriously. And that, that concept in and of itself scares the crap out of me. And then also kind of going on a more serious level, um, you know, people who are good looking are, they tend to be harassed more. That was kind of what the research was saying. I kind of feel like people who aren't as good looking are bullied more. So they're, they're beat up for not looking good. And then those that look good, um, you know, are harassed in that, you know, they're constantly approached or they're heckled on the street or, you know, I mean, you can kind of, you obviously know what I'm talking about there. Um, but it, 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 what the sense that I was getting was that it is not always an enjoyable, pretty picture, um, just because you look good. Um, and then the last one that I had heard about, actually, that also made me sad. Um, people who were exceptionally good looking, I found it difficult to um, have friendships um, with both sexes. Um, so for example, I'll do it from the women's perspective, but again, of course, obviously the same applies for men, but women, um, they felt like all of their female friends hated them. And I, a part of me kind of thinks that, that that might be maybe a little bit true. You can't help but be envious um, of someone. No, I don't want to say you can't help it. It's not uncommon that people are envious of others who they feel have it easier because they look better. So um, same sex friendships were difficult. And then obviously then on the flip, um, opposite sex uh, friendships and relationships were sometimes tainted by, um, you know, the, the unwanted um, desire to kind of step to the next level because someone happened to be so pretty and so good looking. Explaining this all to you guys has made me tired. Not tired in that I don't want to talk to you, but just tired in that it's such a complicated thing. We are supposed to be so much more than what we look like. And assumptions shouldn't be made about us based on what we look like. And yet at the same time, our, I don't want to say our survival in society, but our, our level of success seems to be closely linked to how we look. And then at the same time, never mind everybody else, then this is kind of the theory that I've always kind of prescribed to, you know, how you look definitely has something to do with your level of confidence. And so looking good does matter. So then you have to ask yourself the question, well, how good are you supposed to look? You're supposed to look good enough to make a good salary, but not get harassed at work, but still be able to be taken seriously at work. I mean, just to use work as an example. So you're supposed to look good, but not too good. Because if you look too good, then there are complications with that. And then apparently too, if you don't look good enough. I mean, how do you know where to stop? So no wonder why. And then, I mean, on top of it, then just add like society's influence with all of the you know, advertisements and, and, um, and the modeling industry and movies, um, you know, where that's what we look at is pretty people and the ones who aren't part of the mold, you know, who aren't the size, whatever, with the beautiful skin or whatever, well, then they wind up sticking out, but for all the wrong reasons. Oh yeah. You know, you know, that actress, so-and-so, you know, you remember her or him, but you remember them because they don't look like everybody else. And now that's as if they kind of stick out like a sore thumb. I don't know what the answer is. And doing all of this and talking about all of it, I, at first I, I wanted to kind of kick myself and be like, how did you go down that path? How did you put so much pressure, you know, on yourself to kind of look a certain way and fit a certain mold? Now I'm kind of reflecting and I'm like, well, no wonder why, but I don't really know what the answer is. And I don't, 
I don't, I don't know where, I don't even know where we're supposed to go with it. I guess ultimately we should just be making sure that we are comfortable within ourselves. I think the problems begin when we open the door to the comparisons. Am I as pretty as you? Versus do I feel pretty today? And that could mean inside and out, you know, however you choose to interpret that. So I think when we're comparing ourselves to society and to our friends and to other people that we see on the street, may, and let me just say, to other YouTube channels, I think, I think that might be where we open the door and it becomes a slippery slope. But that's just what, that's another cliche. That's exactly what a slippery slope is. It's something you get involved in and before you know it, you're buried. And I, I kind of feel like that might've been what happened to me. And I do know better, but I'm also, like you guys said, I'm only human. And so I'm definitely not going to be hard on myself for having taken that path. But at the same time, I recognize that it is something I absolutely need to be ridiculously mindful of. Um, I almost kind of feel like we're addicted to beauty. Not that I think that we, we shouldn't enjoy makeup and such. I enjoy putting makeup on because of the way it makes me feel. And I also recognize a lot of the time I am generally, based on like, let's say who I work with or who I hang out with, most of the time I'm the one wearing the most makeup. And I don't mean necessarily foundation, but the most eyeshadow colors and then, and you know, the whole routine. And I'm okay, and that really is not something I give a lot of thought to. It was just something I chose to acknowledge right now. And um, I do that because I want to. So even though I feel like beauty and perfection um, is kind of a conflicted perspective and very complicated, I will never stop with makeup because of the way that it makes me feel. But like I said, I guess the danger might come when... I start comparing myself to someone else and saying, well, hey, I just spent, you know, 30 minutes on my makeup and I don't look as good as you. And that's a problem. So I thought I'd get us started nice and light <laughs> with a nice and easy topic, I guess. Ah! But what do you guys think about any of it? Do you find yourself like going down that path sometimes, whether it's of comparison with of comparing yourself to others or do you rely on your your self-worth based on you know who you are and you know what you personally look like do you find yourself you know conforming to the consensus that you know prettier people have those benefits of you know being more trustworthy and being perceived healthier does a part of you not feel bad? I can't believe I'm gonna say this. Does a part of you not feel bad for the pretty people even though they have their own struggles too? Mm. That's that whole, what would, you, what would you ask for if you were given three wishes? I'm not sure I would ask to be, uh, you know, the most beautiful person in the world. Sounds like that's a complicated, hard job to have. So anyway, thank you for indulging me in this conversation. I would love to know what you think. Um, and I'm just going to cut this off. I hope you have a really good rest of the day. Again, thank you so much for um, everything we've been through so far, which is a whole two videos now. Um, but I do definitely appreciate the feedback, the support, um, and the encouragement. So let's see where this takes us. Tell me also below, what would you like to see next? I'm kind of itching to do, I know it's March, but I'm kind of itching to do a 2017 favorites. I don't care that it's March. I've had so many things piling up. Maybe I'll just do a favorites because I love favorites. Um, but if, and I'm kind of thinking too, I might want to do like a skincare, what my skincare or what skincare I'm using right now. And, um, maybe all those sorts of stuff. And maybe I get ready with me because my routine has changed or whatever. But let me know if there's something else or let me know what you guys are interested in seeing because we're doing this together and that doesn't mean that I um, am only going to give you what, well, part of me is going to give you what I want to do, but at the same time, I do want to hear from you and find out what you're doing. Anyway, have a really good rest of the day. Thanks again so much and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.
By the way, I just wanted to say, I just double checked and the subscriber count app was officially deleted. So we're in the clear and it will not be something that I'm looking for anymore. Thanks to you.